welcome to Cynthia Cake His Hub, where we serve and inspire. Cynthia Cake His Hub is located at plot number 20, Villawanga Road, Avondale, Lusaka. At Cynthia Keke's Hub, we offer the following services. Media, philanthropy, legal bag, and entrepreneurship. You can contact us on the following details. Cynthia Keke's Hub, to serve and to inspire. Welcome to Cynthia Cake His Hub, where we serve and inspire. Cynthia Cake His Hub is located at plot number 20, Villawanga Road, Avondale, Lusaka. At Cynthia Cake His Hub, we offer the following services media, philanthropy, legal bag, and entrepreneurship. You can contact us on the following details. Cynthia Keke's Hub, to serve and to inspire. Good morning and welcome to The Daily Cafe with me, your host, Vanessa Chimba. Uh, with me today in the studio, I'm joined with my guest, of course, Mr. Roy Msonda, who is ex-president and honorary member of Zosa and Mr. Derek Musonda, who is um, immediate past president of Zosa. I know you're all wondering what Zosa is. It is Zambia Occupational Health and Safety Association. So today our topic of the day is safety. Mm -hmm. So let's quickly get into this discussion with my guests today. Um, firstly, to begin with, I would like to find out how you would define safety okay thanks a lot um, i just collect my name because i know these are my names <laughs> so mson and mwamba they are the same but um roy mwamba okay yeah so safety when you look at safety is quite a complex terminology but i'll, pick, I'll make it in a simple terms the safety is a state of mind so that state of mind you are talking of human asset and because uh, workplace safety is borders on human life because the precious asset of any business is a human being. So when you drive safety, you are driving how you can preserve your life proactively. So in essence, safety is state of mind and how well an organization implements the standards or procedures that will protect human life from any accident. That's the simplest way to define safety. Okay. So in that case, that safety is a state of mind. Does that mean if an area is not safe for you, as long as your mind is in that state? Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Let me define the state of mind. Um, I'll just take it away from um, workplace. Let's go to a driver. 
if a driver is under the influence of alcohol, obviously the state of mind is compromised. Mm -hmm. That person will wrongly perceive, perceive the risks as a result to involved in an accident. So similarly, why we are saying the state of mind of a person, because these are the people that are in the front line to execute respective tasks in mm -hmm. workplaces. So if their minds are not set, are not free, then they will be compromising safety standards. As a result, they will start creating shortcuts. And I can assure you, most of the accident, if anything, 95% of accident is behavioral design that caused accidents. So this is why we are focused on the behavior aspect. The behavior aspect, that's what we are linking to the mind, the state of mind of a person. So we always encourage employees to make sure that you create your mind to be free from any obstructions. Just like when you're on your phone, your mind won't be concentrating on what you're doing. You concentrate on your phone, that will distract your attention to what you're doing, which will result in you probable causing an accident or injuring others. The fun part of workplace accident is one can cause an accident, but maybe others will get injured. Mm -hmm. So this is where I also promote brother keeper concept. Okay. So love one another, as the Bible said. Then it's safe to say brother keeper concept. Love yourself as you love your other, the other people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um that's very interesting. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. And also now let's move on to our next question, which is how do you develop a safety and health management system? Yeah, it is quite interesting and uh, a good journey for a successive implementation of safety because we start from development. Remember, we have a lot of uh, standards and uh, I'll give an example. We are coming out from... Um, OSHA 18,000 and now we are moving to ISO 5,000. These are management standards, international standards. So for a company to meet the requirement, they have to comply with the 14 elements from the ISO 5,000. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're just coming from a lot of um, uh, standards across. Uh, we used to have OSHA, which is now phased out. I think uh, when you go in companies, uh, different types of uh, standards, depending on the auditing body. For example, we have DQS, we have uh, NOSA, we have BSI, we have, uh, so there are a lot of uh, uh, auditing bodies and these standards, they come with the package of requirements in terms of elements. Each element will outline, for example, they will tell you that for a company to be successful, they have to develop a policy that will govern both the employees and other welfare facilities. So the starting point to be the police design. So if you look at that also, there are a lot of things that come with a package. For example, you have a human being. How do you allow people to go and work in the in workplaces? Mm -hmm. There's an issue of PPE. You need to provide adequate personal protective equipment. So when you talk of that, you're just looking at a man first. Not only that, we have a lot of machinery. So management system will direct you how a safe machinery will be. For example, we say, you cannot work on a machine without guards because this machine, for, for example, has got rotating components that can injure a person by getting trapped and entangled. Mm -hmm. So we put a lot of things in place in terms of housekeeping. How do you manage a, 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 an accident-free environment? Is by promoting uh, housekeeping. So housekeeping is where you put all the items in the right place and also these things must be sorted out. In other ways, is you promote clean and tidiness in workplaces. It's just like from our own homes. Obviously, no one likes to see the dirty surroundings, so you need to make sure that you promote that. So developing of a safe management system comes into a lot of package. You need to look at uh, risk management systems that you tie to ISO 1001 so that you proactively identify all the risks in your operations and come up with a, what we call risk register. So from that risk register then you go further also develop a baseline risk assessment so that you know that if we have 72 risks in this company, mm -hmm. how are you going to protect our employees? So we are going to start unpacking each risk with the controls and now we don't just put controls but what we call hierarchy of controls. So you need to start factoring in the, the risk ranking so that you create a conducive work environment. So there are a lot of things. This is why you have heard of safe working procedures. Those come because of the risk assessment and the assessment that has been done. So you put on, you develop the safe working procedures that will help people to execute jobs safely because without having procedures, people will be 
I think you'll be creating shortcuts and you know how human beings, you, uh, you always want to finish things first, but a safe working procedure will guide the person now. We have these procedures, how do you make sure that people are following them? Mm -hmm. This is where leadership comes in. So again, they are, they are system that also compel the leaders to go in, in and see what people are doing. Some companies, they'll call it VFL, that is visible felt leadership, where leaders will go interact with people in a positive way. And also, there are also other tools. You have planned task observation for the supervisors, because the supervisors are these people are working closely to the people on the floor. Mm -hmm. And these are critical. And they have to do the PTOs, because the PTO is done when you're trying to see if this person is working and following the procedures. You cannot do a PTO if you do not understand the safe working procedure for a given task. Mm -hmm. So you find that there are a lot of things in some companies that have put to before we start any work, you need to do a pre-task risk assessment so that you identify the probable hazard or risk around the area that you're working. And when you identify these risks, it's not just ends there. You have to go a milestone, you have to put controls. Because without controls, then your risk assessment serves no purpose. So you have to make sure that by putting controls, you create a condition environment that will make sure that you and your team members are working in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. Then supervision is key. I think in industry we have supervisors. Mm -hmm. Like I said, these are frontline soldiers. They are very important. Not only that, we have also other legal compliances that we have to do. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that uh, legally all the machines that are supposed to be tested, they are tested and certified. We will give an example, cranes. If you look at the works that cranes do in industry, they are quite risking. Maybe they are lifting heavy loads. Mm -hmm. So if that equipment is not tested and is not fit for purpose, then it can injure other people. Mm -hmm. So we find that the component of legality is also there, which should not be compromised. And what is so good is even international best practices or international safety management system standards that we are following, equipment management and controls is also a big chunk. Mm -hmm. So it's quite vast. vast a race to follow. Okay. Yeah. That is very interesting. Okay, so from uh, what Mr. Mwamba has explained, I hope I've said the name right this time. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> from what Mr. Mwamba has explained, I'm pretty sure our viewers have a glimpse of what Zambia Occupational Health and Safety Association is all about. But for the sake of some viewers that don't clearly understand what we're talking about here, I would like to push it to Mr. Musonda. Okay. I would like you to explain a bit about ZOSA. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. And good morning, viewers. Um, ZOSA stands for Zambia Occupational Health and Safety Association. So it's a professional organization for health and safety practitioners in Zambia. So it was created in 2010 under the, the, the act. The Societies Act, but it is yet to be enacted under the Act of Parliament as ZOSA Act. Mm. Okay, so. so maybe just to add, um, mm -hmm. this is an association that has, is bringing all the professionals. Remember, each profession has got ethics, mm -hmm. just like doctors. For you to be a doctor, you need to follow some professional ethics. Mm -hmm. So it's the same applies to, to ZOSA. We're trying to bring in the professional, the safety engineers out there to come up and start following the, you know, safety uh, profession comes with a lot of uh, uh, confidentiality because uh, there are times where you have an accident and you're investigating. So a practitioner must make sure that you allow the process to go on. And also we don't just release information in We follow uh, protocols on how you can release information and how you behave as a professional. So it's a pool also that helps um, safety engineers in Zambia also to tap knowledge from one another because mm -hmm. uh, this is not an association that is only the membership within Zambia we have also international members mm -hmm. so we find that uh, we have a lot of platforms we have uh, whatsapp groups mm -hmm. and also the website I think is being developed so it, it's uh, giving people an opportunity and also we share a lot of things on that platform mm -hmm. and if you go out there you find that most of the companies now before recruiting you, they'll ask for that membership. 
So it's quite big and uh, it's quite important because it's giving also protection for the safety engineers in terms of jobs out there. Because you cannot exclude, you cannot work without uh, being a member of ONA, the organized uh, professional body. And just to add on to what my colleague has said, mm -hmm. um, we intend to provide guidance and advocates not only for the safety health and safety practitioners alone, but also for the corporate entities. Mm -hmm. So we've extended the membership even to the corporate world mm -hmm. companies who feel and do see the importance in ensuring that they they actuate the health and safety management mm -hmm. uh, system. So basically, Zosa provides you know benefits in terms of the standards. Mm -hmm. So when the companies and the individuals, the health and safety practitioners, associate themselves with Zambia Occupational Health and Safety Association, mm -hmm. they will be able to benefit from the various programs that uh, the organization has put in place, you know, mentorship, um, uh, other workshops mm -hmm. involving health and safety management systems, and also just provide a baseline on the legal aspect, because the safety practitioner is, able, is supposed to be well versed with both the legal mm -hmm. issues and also the company policy. And my colleague mentioned very clearly to say that in companies for you to institute or for you to effectively implement the safety management system you need the management support mm -hmm. so some of the issues they mentioned like you know the policy so you've seen on companies they've put statements of intent you find that when they've put that policy they've even mentioned the person who's supposed to sign is signed by the highest official mm -hmm. of that company Okay, so that being said, I would like you to elaborate a bit on the importance of an organization in implementing health, and safety and health in a workplace. Yes, uh, this is married to the first question, which was uh, asked at my colleague. Mm -hmm. um, the health and safety management implementation mm -hmm. in a company, not only at a company or workplace, even in our homes and so on, mm -hmm. ensures that we avoid accidents. Mm -hmm. By avoiding accidents, we are protecting the health mm -hmm. of the individuals or the health of the people. We are also protecting the property. Mm -hmm. So the companies are guaranteed that their property will be protected that their workers will work safely, they will be safe from injuries, accidents, they will be safe from also other um, uh, problems which are associated with, with accidents. Then the company property will also be protected, will not incur damages, and at the end of the day enter into what we call accident costs. Mm -hmm. Because accident costs, there are things like costs for insurance, compensation, you know, it's quite diverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe just to add in terms of, uh, like Derek has just put it, uh, there are quite a number of benefits. Remember, when you are in business, you also want to promote your corporate image for the company. Mm -hmm. So when your company is a continuing road of accidents, obviously your corporate image will be affected. And one of the things is, uh, even the financials, they won't uh, give you your loans because they have seen that your company is not safe. Yes. So there are a lot of business um, benefits because even when you go out there, you find that the financial is interested to see how good you protect your employees. Mm -hmm. Then they also going to give you. Not only that, we are most of the companies have products that mm -hmm. they are going on the market. Yes. No one would love to see a product that comes attached to blood. They want mm -hmm. to see a product that is blood free, meaning yeah. the product that is coming from a place where there are no accidents. Mm -hmm. Then you are trying to give corporate assurance to your client to say our work environment is safe. Mm -hmm. Because without that then it's something else. Mm -hmm. So safety is important not only on a corporate uh, on a company, also to the individuals. Remember all these people like I said, they are the important asset of the the, the country and they are economy drivers. And not only that, we respect their families. Mm -hmm. These people are coming to work, leaving their families uh, behind, and also their families, they depend on them. Mm -hmm. So imagine 
a parent goes for work, accident happen, this person is incapacitated. Who's going to provide? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of benefit even for, for the workers. And this is one why we encourage workers that please make sure that you follow the safety rules when at work. Because we are very important. Your family depends on you. Mm -hmm. Their country depends on you. And if you see nowadays, life is very expensive. If you look at uh, the way kids go to schools compared in those Asian days, it's different. Mm -hmm. You need to provide for food, you need to provide for transport. So as an individual who is self-conscious, mm -hmm. then he, there is true meaning of love for your family. Mm -hmm. Then a person who goes out there and starts risking. So it's quite vast if you talk of benefits in terms of industrial gain. Mm -hmm. And also it helps. Remember most of the, in fact I'll say all the companies are under insurance. Insurance will just not come and uh, help you to protect or insure your properties if it, there are no safety measures. Mm -hmm. And this is where safety has gone a milestone where they have put in, there are some emergency preparedness procedures. So that even when the insurance comes, they will know that, okay, yes, accident can happen, but the people, they have put controls. Mm -hmm. For example, in case of fire, you find that most of the companies have bought fire engines, they have installed uh, fire extinguisher in strategic positions. If you go a milestone, some have even gone further to install fire suppression systems in their substation and all areas where you need to be protected. Why? So that they reduce the impact in terms of accidents. So it's something that is very important because it also takes the company to the next level. And also it shows the employees feel happy. It shows the love. And also you find that in terms of employment, there will be high rate of turnovers. Because no one would love to work in a place where you don't know if tomorrow you're going to see your families. Yeah. You all want to be assured that you go for work, mm -hmm. you work safely, and come back and celebrate with your family. Mm -hmm. So in terms of people get, getting that in, in zeal to work for your business or for your company, it will be high. So meaning you'll be receiving a lot of uh, applications yeah, with your unqualified people. So it's a 50-50 from a human perspective and from a business perspective, mm -hmm. so that you should drive safety and see all these benefits. Mm -hmm. And not only that, there are a lot of uh, uh, legal issues that can be if your company is not complying with safety issues. Yeah. you find that you, you've been breached mm -hmm. and the government will come in and they're going to fine you and those are big fines. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that when you promote safety, then you're, you're preventing the issue of government fines. And there are a lot of things that comes uh, with with the safety issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so um, to our audience, always remember to be safety conscious. And remember, down below, you can always leave your comments and always ask your questions. But before we get into details of other questions, we will take a quick break. Join us again on the other side with the Daily Cafe. Welcome to Cynthia Keke's Hub, where we serve and inspire. Cynthia Keke's Hub is located at plot number 20, Vilawanga Road, Avondale, Lusaka. At Cynthia Keke's Hub, we offer the following services media, philanthropy, legal bag, and entrepreneurship. You can contact us on the following details. Cynthia Keke's Hub, to serve and to inspire.
welcome to Cynthia Keke's Hub, where we serve and inspire. Cynthia Keke's Hub is located at plot number 20, Vilawanga Road, Avondale, Lusaka. At Cynthia Keke's Hub, we offer the following services. Media, philanthropy, legal... Welcome back to the Daily Cafe with me, your host, Vanessa Chimba. So we're still on our topic today, which is safety. And now let's just move on to our next questions. So the next question is, what are the benefits of a safety and health management system? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, Earlier on, we mentioned quite uh, some issues concerning the benefits of the health and safety management system. Mm -hmm. So, my colleague, uh, President Roy, uh, talked about ISO 45001, mm -hmm. 2018, which we are currently um, uh, following. Mm -hmm. And then he also talked about OSHA 18001, which is phased out. But uh, all in all, a health and safety management system is a guide yeah. on how to perform for how to perform our work in a safe manner to avoid accidents or incidents. Mm -hmm. So there are several benefits. I would say they are all benefits in the sense that in the first place, like we've mentioned, is that um, the corporate image of the company that is now at organization level tends to be positive. So the company will attract uh, clients, you know, who are health and safety management, I mean, who are health and safety sensitive. When we sell our products, either copper or any minerals that we are selling, or should it be any other, if it's food processing industry, mm -hmm. you'll find that we will have market. Then on our workers, we'll be able to have a healthy, a workforce mm. because the health and safety management system puts in place so many issues there are so many clauses attached to it there are clauses on leadership there are clauses on the actual arrangement how you organize yourselves there are clauses on your leading and lagging indicators mm -hmm. so the lagging indicators these are objectives which you set for the company to say okay we intend by the end of the year to ensure that we achieve zero accidents or zero fatalities mm -hmm. we intend to ensure that we reduce accidents lost time injuries by so much we reduce first aid injuries though there are so many different uh, uh, descriptions that companies use mm -hmm. but ultimately we end up having a very safe environment which is free from accidents free from injuries free from unnecessary costs and then when we adhere, because the safety management system will be a guide, mm -hmm. it will provide us with what to do. What are the objectives that we've set in place? What are the interventions that we've put in place in terms of uh, leading indicators? We put into place those things. Are we going to, going to be doing the VFLs? How many inspections are we going to do? Under emergency preparedness, what are we going to do? Under emergency preparedness, are we going to, how many fire drills? How many emergency drills? that we are going to perform in order to make our people alert so that in case of an emergency, they know the procedure to follow. What many PTOs are we doing? Have we encouraged people to get, you know, to take ownership in carrying out, you know, hazard identifications? How are the supervisors and other safety officers performing in terms of uh, uh, planned task observations? Because what is actually contained on the ground is that the more hazards that we see, the more alerts that we are able to check, the better we prevent the possibility of an accident happening. Okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe just to, to add on uh, the benefits, like I think Keria said, uh, I think even when you are visiting countries, we want to know the state of these countries. There are some countries that we know that there are wars, there are civil wars, and all like, and even when you are told that you'll be flying to this country, I think you tend to get, get worried, asking yourself. So it's the same with the workplace safety. 
I think each and every human being wants to work in a safe environment. So like I said, there will be a high rate of turnover in terms of people wanting to work with you. And also you are going to have well-motivated employees. And when people are motivated, then you see the results from the production results. So mm -hmm. there is positivity in terms of delivering. And remember, in safety we say leaders get results through the people they lead. Mm -hmm. So if you are leading a well-motivated team of employees, then you expect to have good results. So above all, there are a lot of benefits. Some of the things I think we earlier said, even when you're getting loans from the banks, yeah. they want to see your safe performance. Mm -hmm. And also avoidance of um, uh, government breaches in terms of violations, because you will be working and following the laid down procedures and given from any given body. Mm -hmm. So it's in quite important. And for me, the most important thing is just to see a worker coming home and knocking off smiling. Yes, because that's the only the best gift you can give to your family. Yes. You need today to give somebody ten million, but you have lost the father or the mother. I don't think people enjoy that. Yeah, so true. we want to see the happy families in the community. Yeah. And uh, if you have stayed in uh, some areas where there are a lot of industries, when there's an accident, you even feel it in the community. Mm -hmm. Everyone will be affected. Mm -hmm. So we just want to create an environment where everyone is smiling and is happy. Everyone that to see that the company B, they are celebrating because mm -hmm. they have gone for 10 years without accidents. It motivates and people would love to be part of that winning team. Okay. Okay, so our final question for the day is, is the industry receiving governmental support? Yeah, 100%. Um, there's a lot of support from the government through the inspectorates. Uh, we have the mining industry which is supported by Mine Safety Department mm -hmm. and we have a guiding tool which is the mining regression that is driven and uh, with a lot of contents. We have the other side which is uh, the Factories Act that yeah. is CAP 441 of 2010. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, the support is there. Now it's up to the companies to follow. Mm -hmm. Even now uh, when you go in construction, NCC, they are doing a lot of things, national construction. They are doing a lot of things because they are coming and see the quality of works people are doing. How do you feel you build a bridge today and tomorrow the bridge kills people? Yeah. So there are a lot of returns in terms of quality of the products. Mm -hmm. So government has moved the milestone. I think in 2030, there is a vision that government is planning. And this is why if you look at workers' compensation vision zero, it's quite big because they are trying to see how do we help the industries and what is so interesting and good for me is to see in the past people knew that workers compensation is only a reactive part but now they are in the forefront driving the proactive part they want to assist they are tired of uh, compensating people they want to see people retiring in a health state so all you know the government has created the, that platform where even other organization and units within the government they are now changing the, the ball I think it's, uh, maybe it's, 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 it's historical for me, it's something that I've felt very happy to see the approach from workers' compensation. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of support from uh, the government and I think even the, we have government inspectors, factory inspectors who are working closely with the, the industry. So in terms of support, I think the government is there in terms of support and your, yeah. The company is receiving governmental support. Yeah, and I'm sure our viewers have learned one or two things, especially about being safety conscious. I, I mean, personally, I have learned a lot about being safety conscious right here. <laughs> and um, I think now we're coming to the end of our show. This has been the Daily Cafe, and my guests for today have been Mr. Roy Mwamba. And of course, Mr. Derek Msonda. It, this has been the Daily Cafe with me, your host, Vanessa Chimba. Thank you for staying tuned. And remember, stay tuned to CKK TV. Bye. Welcome to Cynthia Cake His Hab, where we serve and inspire. 
Cynthia Keke's help is located at plot number 20, Vilawanga Road, Avondale, Lusaka. At Cynthia Keke's help, we offer the following services. Media, philanthropy, legal bag, and entrepreneurship. You can contact us on the following details. Cynthia Keke's help to serve and to inspire.